What about uh, this crisis today? Oh, actually, the issue relating to AIC is, is not actually a debt uh, to, to be paid by the government to AIC, but it is um, part of a contract between AIC and the government. AIC is to purchase inputs for uh, and pesticides. Well, definitely, for the next, uh, because he's been entrusted uh, so by the government to do so. To, to do so. And, so uh, well, yeah, it's a, a kind of future date, but not mm, uh, a date mm, as such. But what about but the, now, the, the cotton crisis, crisis the, now? Yeah, yes. the, the, the crisis is that uh, currently there is uh, uh, danger or risk that the next season uh, might not have uh, the necessary pesticide. Uh, last year, the Minister of uh, Agriculture had to go to Burkina Faso to meet his uh, counterpart in Burkina Faso to have them uh, and borrow some bottles of the, the pesticide, which is Tia, uh, not Tia, but another one, because uh, the farmers, the producers complained about Tia. They said it's a bad quality pro uh, product, and they said uh, they couldn't afford or continue using that product. Uh, and uh, this year, particularly for the next season, uh, the problem is there's no, the importers have not yet um, imported the, the, the products, which is necessary for uh, the, the, the season this and season. for the farmers. Yeah. That is one, one reason. The other reason is the uh, farmers are unhappy. They are unhappy simply because uh, what they have produced uh, when they sell it, they think the measurement uh, instrument is not uh, reliable because uh, some farmers, for example, expect to have produced four tons of cotton. And finally, when they sell it, where they go and they weigh the, the, the cotton, they say it is three tons. So there's a difference, and they say they're, they're not happy with those instruments. That's the second reason. The third reason is uh, there are many other stakeholders with have, uh, who have been put aside in the process this year particularly, uh, notably the researchers, uh, uh, there's uh, the director of the cotton uh, cotton and Fiber Research Center, who complained, Mr. Uh, Musibau, uh, I, I think his name Musibau, something, uh, and he complained that the researchers have not been taken into on board as they used to do in the past. In the past, the recommendations are taken into consideration in the process uh, to improve the yield of the uh, of the cotton. But uh, this year, unfortunately, they have not been involved as as by the past, as they used to do in the past. And this led uh, some stakeholders to uh, say before the media that uh, the researchers have not been effective in their role. But those, uh, the, the, the researchers organized a press conference last week to mention all those issues and talked about that. When we talk of AIC, what we need to mention is that AIC, which is the Intercotton uh, Association, they're made up, made up of the producers, they have the dinners, and the importers, uh, input importers. And what the farmers say that they complain that dinners and the uh, input importers associate themselves and to, uh, you know, uh, get them marginalized because they are businessmen, they are business people, they're discussing between them, they made ev all the decisions. So as, the f as producers and part and parcel of that association, their uh, views, their viewpoints, their contributions are not taken into consideration. Oh, quite so sure. There is a turmoil about, in yeah. the cotton sector, and I believe that, well, the government has to handle that issue very seriously mm -hmm. and, you know, try to bring about uh, the various stakeholders involved in the sector, uh, I mean, cotton sector. Mm -hmm. Well, shifting from that item, I would like now to address uh, the item in connection with uh, Nigeria, mm -hmm. Benin border police station, yep. where well, it seems that uh, there is a kind of turmoil in uh, at that border. Is that true? Yeah, definitely. Uh, currently, the pro uh, government is anticipating the construction or the reconstruction of the border, and especially the construction of checkpoints, which will be uh, along the, the border. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it is a, a huge project, and uh, the development partners uh, have their contribution, which uh, amounts to um, 15 billion CFA francs. But what happens? Is the project is to, is to start to be launched on April the 17th, but up to now there's a family called Family Yamajako, Yamajako in at the border at the right spot where the uh, project is to be construct, constructed, and before 64 families used to live there. The government has uh, compensated for them to leave the area for the project to, to take place, and uh, the 63 other families have left. 
except the uh, Yamajako family. Uh, there's one family called Yamajako. They're still there. They're complaining that uh, out of the 300 million francs CFA that the government has paid to compensate for those who are there, they have not received any penny. Uh, so uh, they, they say they cannot move out of that place until they get something. But the wow. Minister of uh, Interior, um, Benoit de Glas, was there uh, this week to tell them that, and give them an ultimatum to set the, uh, next Monday, tomorrow actually, yeah. if they don't leave the place, the bulldozers will come and just destroy all the houses, uh, in, including yes, the Yes, I think uh, uh, they, the they have to be abide by the law, and that's mm -hmm. the Yamajakos family should understand that well. This is for the public interest. Yeah. And I believe that we still have a number of items to touch, but unfortunately due to time constraint, but seeing what is happening in the sub-region, yeah. especially the coup d'etat in Guinea-Bissau yeah. and yeah. Uh, Mali currently, the interim president. Oh, well, roughly, roughly speaking, can you say just a few words about these? Uh, <clears throat> well, what I can say is that uh, the, uh, the turmoil, instability in the region now is becoming a, a crucial issue. And Definitely. I think that uh, African Union, together with uh, uh, ECOWAS, the economic community of West African states and uh, uh, international community, must look at that issue uh, with um, much more attention because it requires a lot of attention from the uh, international community. Because uh, in Mali, it was recent. In Guinea-Bissau as well, the, the elections in Guinea-Bissau particularly were scheduled for April 29th. I, I don't, I, it is not understandable that uh, a few weeks before election, uh, some military will take, you know, conduct a coup and take the power. So I think that issue of instability in the region must be uh, looked with a lot of attention and um, it should not continue, I think. And that's why we must welcome the, the position of the international community, ECOWAS, African Union, Ban Ki-moon, all those who condemn the coup. I think uh, this is well, what Well, I the think the international yeah. community is just uh, setting ready just to do something tangible, especially the chairman of the echo was, uh, I mean, uh, the head of state of Cote d'Ivoire, mm -hmm. well, is uh, striving just with his uh, uh, peers well, to find the right solution to the crisis in the sub-region, especially in Mali with the Tuareg issue and uh, um, Guinea-Bissau where there was a coup d'etat. Well, dear viewers, unfortunately, well, time is limited and uh, we have just to stop here for today. But next week we are going to come about with a very tangible and current topics that we are going to address. Thanks so much for your attention. Thanks, Munda Shiro, for coming. And we keep in touch for next week for Sound Magazine. Have a nice, a good night rest, definitely. Bye-bye.